Prince United States referee Arthur McKenzie, who's been to this country several times before, and in fact has refereed a Jim Watt Championship before. And the first thing you'll notice is that Arguello, the challenger, is a little taller. He stands five, nine and a half. He's two inches taller than Watt's fifth defense, Arguello's attempt to win his third world title. Southpaw comes out, right fist, right foot forward, with that astonishingly pale skin, the colour of candles. Now the announcer for this fight is Harry Carpenter, well-respected British announcer and broadcaster. Aguayo having his 71st professional fight tonight. And this is his 16th world championship ever been beaten once in a world title fight and that was the first one he ever had way back in 1974. What's going on family? I'm Scrapbook Boxing Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff Series. I want to continue to examine 100 years of world championship fights. We're looking at a lightweight championship bout. Jim Watts, who is the southpaw from Britain, he is the champion. And Alexa Grail from Nicaragua. He is the challenger in this case. He's looking to become the sixth three weight division champion in boxing history at this point. Really Aguero's to your right, he has on green trunks and watches to your left with the blue trunks. The main concern in the what camp, I imagine, yeah, beautiful right hand by Alexis Aguero. He would defeat Ruben Olivares with a 13 round knockout. Inglewood, California. His last fight back on November the 1st. 1974. But he came through that. And what? He'll be 33 next month. He's a very determined young man indeed. And when you look at Alexis Aguero, he reminds you of Ricardo Lopez. He keeps his hands up very high. They'll have to pin him down to the He's a very technical fight. fighter. And he prides himself on that. It was a time when Alexis Aguayo was in conversations with Salvador Sanchez. What a fight that would have been. Another man too anxious to lead. But with the death of Salvador Sanchez, what that fight would not be possible. A but he's considerably changed his style in later years. And with it has come this astonishing late career success. A real Indian summer of a career. Now once again, Alexis Aguayo, he holds his hands up high, high guard position, keeps his distance, has a very good strategic jab. And he's well reserved with that jab. In other words, he only uses it when necessary. That's either to back his man up or keep his man at distance or disguise his right hand behind the jab. Now this fight took place in 1981. That's where we are in this series. Now, the last video we looked at Wilfred Benitez when he knocked out Maurice Hope for the junior middleweight championship belt. He would become the fifth three-weight division champion. Now, Alexis Aguayo was trying to become the sixth man to become the three-weight division champion. Before him was Tony Canzanelli. Barney Ross made the attempt. Henry Armstrong was successful in his attempt. Aguayo, the former WBA featherweight champion, nine stone. Then the WBC junior lightweight. Very good movement by Alexis Aguayo. Now attempting to win the WBC lightweight title, nine stone nine. Very good hook and straight right hand by Alexis Aguayo. 
Now, Aguero right now has Jim. He has Jim Watts on the defense. Aguero beginning to jab with some severity. Oh. Good feint right hand by Alexis Aguero. Now, Jim Watts is very sharp in making sure that he keeps distance. The issue he is having is that Alexis Aguero will not be denied. You notice he keeps creeping up in a forward position against Jim Watts. Good right hand thrown by Alexis Aguero. Now Jim Watts comes back with a 1-2, but it doesn't discourage Alexis Aguero. And that's going to be the problem in this fight. Aguero should have jabbed before he threw that right hand. He would have known whether he was able to throw it or not. That's why you must stick with the basics. Jim Watt, of course, is already on record as saying that he doesn't think the man is too versatile. He's a bit mechanical. And that he thinks... He has to remember he is fighting a southpaw. ...is the better artist of the two. This is a million-dollar fight. Over 500,000 pounds has been paid Good right hand thrown by Alexis Aguero. Two of his uh, most important fights, he stopped his man in the 13th round. And he's beginning to get through with rather fast and accurate punching. The right hand of Aguero is beginning to find its way across. And what would do well to keep clear of that. Now that was a very good punch for a southpaw. As when you drop the right hand down to the pit of the stomach. You have to set it up with a jab. You have to make sure your opponent is on his heels at the time that you're going to make that impact. Good right hand thrown by Alexis Aguero. Once again, he keeps up both his guards like Ricardo Lopez. Good jab by Alexis Aguero. They call Alexis Aguero Flaco. That stands for skinny in Spanish. Oh, good jab by Alexis Aguero. He has a champion on the move. Very good left jab to the head and attempt with a right hand straight to the body. These are the kind of things you want to see. But he's throwing his right hands away. He has to stop doing that. 
He has to remember he's in there with a southpaw. A little further distance with a southpaw than it would be for an orthodox fighter. Oh, very good distance, Alexis Aguayo. He's reaching his opponent at this point. He needs to continue with the jab and get close enough to Jim Watts where he can land a right hand properly. I don't think Jim Watts can handle a straight right hand that's pro properly thrown by Alexis Aguayo. We'll see what happens when he does get hit with that punch. He's still standing, but he didn't take it well. Aguero has to continue in that sequence. And the normally tidy hair of what now is ruffled. Left jab, straight right hand down the pipe. That's about with Watts is vulnerable to at this point. Watt tries the left hand down at the top. Weir needs to continue to go to the body and come back up to the head. Rogelio Robles of Mexico bid the million dollars originally, but then found he couldn't find an arena in America for it. And so Harry Levine and Mickey Duff London stepped in and got in the oh, good right. That was beautiful left hook to the body, actually. If you look at Aguero's guard, his right guard is up correctly. It's at home where it needs to be. Actually, when you look at him, the height of him, you wonder how he ever made featherweight. What, keeping his guard high to ward off those wide right hands coming in? Skull. As he gets the jab in. Good jab by Alexis Aguero. Staggered again by left from Aguero. And again. And the champion now is finding this very, very hard. Good jab Alexis by Aguero. Aguero pumps one in. But what still comes forward? He's trying to turn the tide against 
the other man now. He's been retreating for eight rounds and now he's trying to come forward. And again, that long locked arm of our player snakes out. Reach has played a big part in this set. The referee is Arthur McCanty. The referee has had a quick look at it, but he's satisfied that uh, he can continue. Mickey Doug is the promoter for this fight. Watt is ready to go, but Arguello is... And still, the blood trickles from the left nostril of Jim Watt. Good one, two thrown by That's left the first Real sign of damage around those eyes, but he's cut on the cheekbone under the left eye. That's not a dangerous place. All right, what's going on, family? I'm Scrapbook Boxing. 100 years of world championship fights. All great fights and all great fighters will never be forgotten on my channel. Alex Aguero will defeat Jim Watts and become the sixth man to hold three different titles in three different weight divisions. We're in 1981 in this series. Much respect between these two men. A clear win for the results. Once again, he is a contender, and Jim Watts was the champion.